honorable mayors, distinguished uh, uh, researchers, uh, governmental partners, participants to this uh, webinar. Good morning to all of you. First, I would like really to uh, thank PIDS for inviting UNFPA, the United Nations Population Funds, to participate in this year's celebration of the Development Policy Research Month. It is really an important event to draw attention on the importance of policy research in the formulation and nat uh, of national development plans. And it's really timely because uh, this uh, year and now mainly, uh, the Philippines uh, is uh, in a uh, you know, the path to finalize its uh, national development plan. So congratulations to IDS for organizing this uh, very important uh, uh, webinar. My uh, presentation today, as you said, uh, is uh, focusing on how and what we as a UNFPA with our uh, partner did in protect, uh, protecting uh, women and young people and children from the broader impact of the COVID-19. And this unprecedented you know, situation that uh, all uh, you know, the world and the Philippines faced uh, during the last uh, three years. Next slide, please. So during the pandemic and while it was uh, identified that the most at risk groups are mainly men and all, uh, mainly uh, elderly due to the higher probability of dying in the beginning, you know, of the pandemic and before uh, the uh, vaccine, uh, evidence and experience from previous uh, epidemics uh, shows that uh, women and young girls are often marginalized. Yes, indeed, the limited mobility and low income increase women's and girls' vulnerability and expose women and girls to mainly gender-based violence and sexual exploitation. Resources for essential sexual reproductive health and maternal health, like what we heard, you know, from the video uh, uh, you know, previously, are often, you know, get redirected to manage, you know, over, uh, you know, of course, priorities during the epidemic and pandemic. And the essential sexual reproductive health and maternal health services are often, you know, uh, marginalized and are not uh, taken, uh, uh, you know, used as uh, a priority. In addition, women are disproportionately bear the burden of uh, additional work during the quarantines and lockdowns. Next slide, please. So knowing that UNFPA supported its, uh, our national and local partner to respond to the needs of women and young people. So through first collecting information and data on the challenges that women and young people face. This is really very important. It's the first step, first stage. We need to know better what are the challenges that women and young people are facing. And this is why, you know, research, studies, survey, uh, information is very important. Uh, so to uh, and uh, what we did also is uh, to collect information about how healthcare workers were uh, you know what, what was uh, you know the main challenges that they faced so that they can continue serve the needs of the women and young girls and uh, uh, we also look to uh, innovative ways to reach and respond to the needs of women and young people during this uh, mainly the lockdown and the pandemic. Next slide, please. As I said before, even during the lockdown, there was a need to know how the COVID-19 pandemic and the mobility restriction will be affecting women and young girls. And the main studies that we used and survey we used for that purpose was the gender and inclusion, uh, inclusion assessment of COVID-19 pandemic on vulnerable women and girls, 
We also uh, used, you know, the result of the longitudinal cohort study on the Philippine child uh, uh, through phone survey. We continued, you know, to do this uh, study, which, uh, you know, started before the pandemic, but even during the pandemic, we continue to uh, collect data uh, and to be informed about, uh, you know, the youth uh, views uh, during the pandemic. We also, uh, you know, launch a, a, a big data analysis on family planning, and uh, we did also an analysis on the excess of birth and death du during the pandemic. Next slide. So as you can see from this uh, graph, women are uh, dispo uh, disproportionately shouldered more uh, of the burden of care work during the pandemic. And during the lockdown, it is usually the female family members who bears the responsibility of assisting, for example, the adolescent uh, child on their studies. And this is, uh, we, we were informed uh, through the core study. And also the women are uh, the most, uh, you know, uh, 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 are in the front line to take care of the elderly of their family. Next slide, please. So here uh, you can notice that uh, while the risk of dying from COVID-19 is low among adolescents, and we know it, the pandemic has a significant impact on the broader well-being of children and young people. Data from the court study shows that anxiety levels among children and young people significantly increase during the pandemic. At the same time, an analysis of the excess of death in the Philippines during the pandemic showed that uh, there was an increased number of deaths due, due to uh, an unten intentional self-harm. Uh, you know, uh, we noticed that uh, 50, we, uh, we had 50% increase in 2020 comparison with uh, 2019. This is important to take into account how, you know, the COVID-19 impacted the well-being of young people, even if uh, they were not, you know, uh, the most uh, exposed to the virus. Uh, next slide, please. So, uh, yeah, the number of adolescents who uh, also you can see from this uh, slide who live in food insecure households increased as well from 71% in 2019 to 80% and 77% in 2020 and 2021 respectively. This is also, we were informed by the cohort study you see how it's important to continue, you know, even during the lockdown to uh, be informed by these uh, studies. And mainly this longitudinal study was very, very informative for us. Most adolescents, almost 90% had difficulty in distance learning method and 87% would prefer to go back to face-to-face -face classes. Uh, so this is also something important after that, to take into account when, uh, you know, the, the decision makers will, uh, you know, take a decision on what to do, what kind of reform, and uh, what are the policies that needs to be uh, put in place. Next slide, please. So access to uh, essential health services was also an issue during the pandemic. And uh, yeah, we heard from, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the video that uh, you projected uh, in the beginning of this webinar, how uh, mainly SRH, uh, you know, and uh, maternal health services are uh, very important to, uh, to be continued uh, even during uh, the pandemic. So during the start of the pandemic, UNFPA uh, estimated globally, I'm not talking about only, the, uh, of course, the Philippines, but uh, it was a study that UNFPA conducted uh, globally. And we estimated that uh, without any intervention from countries, we, co uh, couldn't we could result in 1.4 million 
unintended pregnancies. This is very important. So it means that uh, if uh, countries, they didn't, you know, re, uh, uh, put in place the response and the services and the SRA services, it will, it could result to 1.4 million unattended pregnancies. And we can imagine all the consequences of this 1.4 million unattended pregnancies. Analysis of social media also sentiments show that many women online express their issues on the availability of family planning services and commodities and uh, the access to a health provider for their reproductive health concerns. Of course, uh, the lockdown, uh, you know, make uh, a lot of difficulties for women to access to health uh, uh, services. And analysis on excess deaths revealed that the number of maternal deaths in the country increased by almost 30% during the pandemic in comparison with, uh, to the average from previous years. This is very important, 30% increase during you know, the pandemic. Next slide, please. What we did to, uh, as a UNFPA with our partner to respond to the needs of healthcare workers who was in the front line to serve, you know, women and young people. So first, of course, we provided the personal protective equipment to health workers in the maternity hospitals at the beginning of the pandemic. We also provided the COVID testing machine uh, for BARM uh, and uh, provided uh, the human resources support to strengthen data collection and management for DOH COVID-19 surveillance. As I said, we continued with all of the studies that were ongoing and uh, we provided the support for that. Next slide, please. So as I said, one of the challenges in the pandemic was ensuring the continuity of service provision and the safety of both healthcare workers and women and girls and their patients. To ensure that uh, sexual reproductive health and maternal health service continue during the pandemic, UNFPA during the start of the pandemic donated 10.7 uh, million pesos worth of PPEs to the DOH and health facilities in the country. Next slide, please. At the same time, and to ensure that uh, mothers deliver safely in health facilities where, uh, you know, uh, all of the uh, health facilities were uh, focusing uh, to respond, uh, you know, to uh, the needs of uh, people affected by uh, the COVID-19, UNFPA, we deployed what we call the emergency maternity tent facilities. Is the in several health facilities. This tent is uh, fully equipped uh, uh, and it's uh, like, uh, you know, uh, a maternity ward uh, with full equipment uh, so that uh, women can deliver in, uh, in, in this uh, tent safely. Uh, and even if, uh, you know, uh, the uh, uh, the hospitals were uh, uh, were not capable to respond uh, to uh, uh, SRH and uh, maternal health uh, needs of women. These stands were uh, put in place so that uh, the mother can deliver safely. These uh, so facilities uh, served as uh, triage areas and delivery room, as I said, for the pregnant women uh, who tested positive. And in other, uh, you know, areas, uh, it was uh, for, uh, to, for women to deliver safely when they are not positive, but when, uh, you know, the services were offered in the hospital for the uh, positive cases. Next slide, please. So, yeah. Yeah, so as uh, you can see, 3,000, almost 4,000 pregnant women and uh, young girls were served under this, uh, with uh, this uh, facility. Next slide, please. We also look at uh, for innovative ways to reach and respond 
to the needs of women and young people during the, pandem uh, uh, the pandemic. So we uh, take advantage of uh, all these, uh, you know, uh, online modalities, webinars, and uh, people we, we transfer, you know, from uh, the face-to-face -to, -face to online. And uh, we, we took advantage of these online modalities of engagement and service delivery, and we launched uh, uh, the reproductive health uh, care dot info. Uh, and I will talk uh, more later in an, another slide about uh, the reproductive health care info, uh, which reached uh, in 2020 uh, 3.1 million people uh, through uh, this. Uh, online uh, platform where a uh, platform yeah we also initiate uh, innovative ways uh, in bringing services closer uh, to where women live through uh, this reproductive health bike patrol and i will also talk more about this reproductive health uh, bike uh, patrol uh, we reached uh, you know uh, almost uh, yeah 500 uh, 5, uh, women and uh, 4,000 and a half uh, accepted the family planning method through this uh, uh, mobile, you know, services. Next slide, please. We expanded also our partnership. For example, uh, UNFPA in partnership uh, with YPEER, the Youth Peer uh, Education uh, Network in the Philippines, we rolled out a series of online dialogue between young people and policymakers entitled uh, uh, Kabayanihan. And uh, the series allowed young people to be able to directly engage with the government decision makers, ask about issues relevant to them, and express their challenges uh, and uh, the challenges that uh, they face during uh, this lockdown and the um, uh, uh, pandemic. Next slide, please. UNFPA, in partnership uh, with PSRP, also developed an online platform uh, called the Reproductive Health uh, Info. As I said, this platform, uh, I said that I will talk more about uh, this platform. Uh, this platform provides, you know, information on sexual reproductive health, family planning, uh, where to get, uh, you know, the services, information about uh, the family planning uh, method, um, advice on reproductive health in general and rights, uh, among others. And uh, to, uh, to, 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 to date, the platform has reached almost 13 million people online. And uh, it's uh, so successful that uh, in the beginning, we uh, used it uh, um, as, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, this uh, platform for the lockdown, during the lockdown, but uh, we will continue with our partners uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to reach, you know, online people. And people, we can see that uh, they interact uh, with uh, the, uh, uh, the providers uh, uh, during this, uh, you know, uh, uh, through this uh, platform. Next slide, please. So uh, another, yeah, as I said, uh, we provided, uh, you know, our health workers with uh, these reproductive health uh, bikes. It's uh, really uh, to, uh, uh, you know, uh, through the pandemic, we saw that uh, people and women have difficulty, you know, uh, to uh, access uh, to safe uh, uh, transportation. Uh, so uh, through this uh, mobile, you know, services, the reproductive health bikes, bikes uh, provided to the health workers, uh, they, ca they uh, can, uh, it, ca it would be used, you know, uh, to go to the women, you know, themselves and to the young people and provide services nearer their place uh, of residence. And uh, here also, uh, we, uh, or we reached, uh, you know, uh, uh, almost, uh, as I said, uh, 5,000 uh, women and uh, young people through these uh, mobile services. So, yeah, in summary, next slide, please. Uh, in summary, 
Uh, the basic and special needs of women and young girls continue and are often unmet during crisis situations. And this is what uh, this uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, you know, pandemic uh, revealed. Uh, it's, uh, you know, the vulnerability of women and uh, young girls and how women and, and young girls sometimes are not prioritized and their needs are not uh, pro uh, prioritized. So they are uh, at risk, uh, you know, uh, from uh, the broader socioeconomic effects of the pandemic. We, they are the most marginalized and they are the most at risk of uh, the socioeconomic effects of the pandemic. The availability of age and, then, uh, and, uh, and the gender disaggregated data is needed. And this is all the importance of the research and the studies that would need to be conducted even during, uh, you know, uh, the uh, crisis. It's uh, really very important to have, uh, you know, age and gender disaggregated data to understand the challenges of women and young pe uh, people that uh, usually, you know, are not uh, very well no known. So, the, uh, as I said, the pandemic exposed the vulnerability of health system to shocks, which affected the delivery of essential sexual reproductive health and maternal services, further mar marginalizing women and young girls. And here is all the importance of researchers that will inform the decision makers and the reforms needed using a social justice perspective to reduce inequality and mainly to ensure that women and girls will be prioritized so that we can achieve the uh, sustainable development goal by 2030, the ICPD plan of action, and to ensure that the Philippines will reduce to zero preventable maternal death zero gender-based violence and harmful practices, and zero unmet for family planning. Thank you very much for your attention.